I knew I had killed a big deer. How many points does he have? Uh, he's got 35 scoreable, <laughs> and I think three broke off, and one is non scoreable. I, I guess 39 total. With a Boone and Crockett score of 260 and an eighth, Ben's 2002 Garrett County Buck became Kentucky's new non typical state record. Wow. Well, he fit through the door. <laughs> yeah, he'll fit through, but he's not got a lot of room. Wow. Look at that. I really, to be honest with you, I never thought about him being a state record or biggest deer. I think he was the biggest deer killed in North America that year. As a matter of fact, Kentucky produced the biggest North American non-typical buck the previous year as well, according to North American Whitetail Magazine. Though not officially entered into the record books because of the velvet antlers, Troy Wilson's buck scored a non-typical 293 and an eighth. Although Ben Bruggles' deer is considered Kentucky's biggest non-typical on record killed by a hunter, it's not at the top. In 2004, Chris Crawford found this monster dead in Henry County. It officially scored 270 and 5 eighths, making it Kentucky's state record non-typical. All these years ago, you and I were sitting out there waiting for, hoping to see deer, and now all these huge deer are taken. So where did it all begin? Like many states, Kentucky saw extreme decreases in its whitetail population due to overharvest. Now by 1916, it's estimated there were less than 1,000 whitetails statewide, prompting actions by Kentucky's General Assembly. The legislature closed Kentucky's deer season in 19, I think, uh, in 1916, I think, and it was closed for 50 years. It didn't, we didn't have another deer season until 1956. By 1947, deer were being live trapped and moved around to repopulate the state. You know, by about 1956, it looked like we had enough to have a very limited, a very short, like about a three-day season, and it was antler deer only. One, you know, one, if you killed an antler deer, you were done. Restoration efforts continued in the years to come with the number of deer and hunters increasing. Live trapping and relocation of whitetail continued up until 1999, totaling 10,096 deer being stocked across the state by the Kentucky Department of Fish and Wildlife. I know guys that went five years without seeing deer. It's just, how can you not see them? But, but you know, then they weren't that plentiful. And I remember back in the, in the 70s and 80s, if we saw a deer footprint, we were tickled to death. I built a permanent stand over, this is a true story, over a deer track. But it didn't seem to me like until the late 70s to the 90s, all of a sudden through that, that time period, the chart had to really... And it did. And what happened right there during that short time in history. From talking to, you know, our our first, well, our longest term deer coordinator that we that we had, John Phillips, and that, the, the person I went to work with, uh, I asked him that same question one time, and he said that it just took that long for deer numbers to reach the sort of critical mass that then growth takes off because it's easier then for the bucks and does to find each other. Kentucky had an estimated 350,000 deer by 1999, and hunter surveys were calling for a trophy deer. You know, I love to deer hunt, and I've always dreamed of killing a big, and everybody that likes to deer hunt would like to kill a big one, you know. For such dreams to come true, Kentucky would enter into the next phase of herd management, the one buck limit for hunters. Deer don't reach uh, maximum antler growth. Uh, it doesn't peak out uh, t until about, you know, five and a half, six and a half years of age. Uh, so anything you can do to reduce the kill on the one and a halfs and the two and a halfs means you move more into three and a half or older. Though Kentucky already had restricted requirements on buck harvest, they enacted a statewide limit on bucks in 1991 for all private land. The one buck per year regulation would be something that Robert Smith would soon come to enjoy. We'll need some more room in between us probably. <laughs> <laughs> Golly. Robert Smith of Boone County took this trophy in Pendleton County in 2002, to this day, it holds Kentucky's typical record. He netted um, 204 and 2 eighths. He grossed 207 and 7 eighths because of the little deduction right here. Cost me the world record. world record. 275. <laughs> 275. Yeah, that was gutted. Wow. Yeah, that was field dressed. The following year, 52 officially scored Boone and Crockett bucks would be taken in Kentucky. Did you entertain any thoughts in your mind at that point that that might be a, a state record? No, I had no idea because, I, like you said, I was a, a, a meat hunter. I really wasn't concerned about shooting a buck just for the, the score because, to be truthful, honestly, I never knew about the Boone and Crockett score system. 
Not the case for wildlife biologist and outdoor writer Bill Cooper, who's a veteran scorer for the Boone and Crockett system. On this day, he's in Union County, Kentucky, to officially score Mason Hancock's deer that he took during the 2007 Youth Weekend. My dad, he had to bring it to school, show my class. Right. We may bring it in front of the whole assembly. Now, who wouldn't want to take a picture of this guy? 23.9 Uh It's pretty unbelievable. I, I mean, I've been hunting myself 16, 17, 18 years deer hunting and never seen anything to even come close to this. It's just, it's unreal for him to do it at age nine. And especially for me being right there beside him, it, you know, it's pretty neat feeling for me. Uh, and he's at age nine and he don't really understand what he's got. He just knows it's bigger than dad's. Big enough for a Bill Cooper article. He's, you know, kind of Mr. Whitetail of Kentucky, you know. Since I was in Kentucky on a regular basis, I just decided in my spare time of being up here, I'd just track down some of the bigger deer that there were records of with the department. And, and while at that, he decided to write a few articles on Kentucky bucks. But there have been over 600 officially scored, and of those 600, I probably have photographed, I would say, over 90% of them. Adding yet another photograph to a soon-to-be-published book on Kentucky whitetails. 210 and 7 8. Now that score puts Mason's buck in third place for largest non-typicals taken in 2007. First place, however, went to Irvin Vance, who took this 29-pointer in Owen County. I get the proverbial question about, well, where did they come from? John Phillips, who used to be the deer coordinator with the state, probably put it best. Uh, uh, he used to use the phrase that you could have one pop up anywhere. Especially places like Lewis County, where there seems to be something in the water. Is there something magic in the water up here? Oh, yeah, I hope you say it that, but uh, mainly you get a lot of good cropland along the, you know, the river bottoms, and then you got the deep forest that they can get back into and uh, grow older. Uh, that's the key to killing a big deer is having age. In February 2008, Jeremy Ruckel hosted a family reunion of sorts for Lewis County hunters, and what they had to show was amazing. And this was, for a while, the state record, right? Yeah. In 1996. In 1996, yeah. What did he end up scoring? He scored the official Boone and Crockett at 247 eighths. Tom, this is not something you see every day. You don't get the shed of the deer that you shot the following part of that season. You didn't know that deer was necessarily on your property, but you found these sheds right before. Yeah, 238 and 180. 238. Now, I'd be really happy with a 138. <laughs> bow hunting for 25 years so I don't I try not to look at him too much and you get too excited as soon as he started walking on out in the field I just waited for the for the chest shot and he wasn't about 12 or 13 yards Jeremy I'm looking around behind us it's later in the afternoon but early this morning almost instantly you ran a thousand people through here it seems folks have gone deer wild in Kentucky and word travels fast when a trophy's been taken. I think I got in bed about three o'clock at night and I had people in the driveway at six the next morning. I had people stop knocking my door. Can we see your buck? No I'm kidding. <laughs> people knocking on my door daylight from daylight to dark. Now the back roads and hills of Kentucky are full of great stories about the one that didn't get away. But maybe the best testimony of Kentucky's deer herd can be shown by an area taxidermist. How many Boone and Crockett's do you think you've run through here? Do you have any idea? I've mounted 49. 49 Boone and Crockett's. That's been officially scored and entered. Uh, all of them from Kentucky? All, everyone I've ever mounted has been Kentucky. I don't think it's all me. I think I'm just in a good area. You mounted the famous Dan Miller buck. Yeah, and that deer was totally amazing. I mean, he was just tremendous, and, and I'll never forget when I first, I went to Dan's house to pick that deer up, and when I walked in there and saw that deer laying there, and I grew up my whole life seeing deer, and I was amazed. So where does Kentucky rank in the nation with its trophy production? And I've seen Kentucky ranked everywhere from second to fifth, and uh, depending on what variable you want to use to do the ranking, but I would say with the type of deer that Kentucky is producing right now that... Uh, they would be ranked right in with the states like as far as the chances of going and, and seeing, taking a good trophy deer, they would be ranked right in with the states of that border it, Illinois, Indiana, Ohio, and to some extent uh, even Kansas and Iowa simply because it's so tough to go out and find a place to hunt in 
in, uh, in some of these states. In Kentucky, Kentucky's one of the few states left that you can hunt the rut with a center fire rifle and buy the license across the counter. And knowing that gives all of us a reason to be proud and thankful for Kentucky's deer herd. I'm probably never going to see another one like it. It don't, you know, don't mean I can't try. As long as I'm breathing and walking, I'll love to hunt. Heck, I've already got the record. Let me try to get someone else to have as much fun as I have. You know, he's up there with the, you know, hopefully up there with the top, you know, deer in the state ever taken. You know, it's it's quite an accomplishment. But he's going to be remembered as, you know, with that deer, I guess, forever. Mm -hmm.